Welcome to Myositis 101 for patients. Today we will talk about muscle symptoms such as muscle pain, muscle weakness and muscle fatigue as a symptom of myositis. There is a lot of confusion amongst the doctors as well as patients about these symptoms. So we will hopefully be able to clear some of this confusion between these three symptoms. Muscle weakness is inability to perform a single repetition of a specific task using muscle. For example, inability to lift a gallon of milk or inability to get up from a chair or getting in and out of a car and so on. Whereas muscle fatigue is inability to continue to perform a certain activity or a task after multiple repetition. For example, patient may have no difficulty in getting up from a chair or start to walk. But as they continue to walk, they feel more muscle weakness and fatigue and they have to stop. In other words, muscle weakness is lack of strength in the muscle from the very beginning, from the start of the activity. Whereas muscle fatigue is inability of your muscles to continue performing a certain task or activity over time, not from the beginning, but as the person continues to perform that activity, they feel weak and fatigued. Now these two symptoms go hand in hand. If you have muscle weakness, obviously you're going to have muscle fatigue because if you have inability to perform a task from the beginning, you're going to have continue having difficulty in that task over time. But if you have muscle fatigue, that may or may not mean that you have muscle weakness. At this point, I also want to remind you about the pattern of muscle weakness and muscle fatigue in myositis. In myositis, muscle weakness and fatigue usually involves both sides of the body and usually involves muscles that are closer to the core of the body or the center of the body, which we call as proximal muscles such as shoulder muscles or hip muscles are more affected than hand muscles or the foot muscles. The exception to this rule is inclusion body myositis where they may or may not have this pattern. And sometimes they have more distal patterns. For example, patient with inclusion body myositis may have more weakness of the hand grip or their forearm or their knees as well as their ankles. Now muscle pain, which we in medical terms call myalgia, is simply muscle pain or achiness over the bulk of the muscle. Typically in myositis, you will see the muscle pain is reported on the shoulders or the arms because these are the more bigger and the proximal muscles as well as on the thighs or the hip area. Now myositis patients can present to their doctors initially or as their first symptom of muscle weakness, muscle fatigue or muscle pain or any combination of these three symptoms. However, the most common presenting symptom of myositis is muscle weakness followed by muscle fatigue followed by muscle pain. <clears throat> Even when patients present as their initial symptom of muscle pain or muscle fatigue and without any muscle weakness per se, your doctors can on examination detect some muscle weakness in proximal muscles in most cases of myositis. In other words, having muscle pain or fatigue without muscle weakness is quite rare in myositis, at least initially. It can happen, however, after the myositis is treated with various different medication. But as a presenting symptom, it is quite rare. Note that there are some subsets of myositis which may not have any involvement of muscle. They may not have muscle weakness, muscle pain or fatigue such as amyopathic dermatomyositis have horrible skin rashes from dermatomyositis but have no muscle involvement or antisynthetase syndrome which may have significant involvement of their lung, arthritis and skin but may not involve muscle. <clears throat> Let's now discuss what happens to myositis symptoms over time or after treatment. Many patients who initially present with muscle weakness may evolve into more of muscle pain and fatigue after treatment or over time. As myositis patients get treated, their muscle weakness improves over weeks to months. And what would typically happen is in, with the improvement of their muscle weakness, their muscle fatigue and pain should improve. But that does not happen all the time. 
In many cases, muscle weakness improves, but muscle fatigue and pain remains. <clears throat> so that leads to a situation where your doctor is saying that you have improved or doing well because your muscle strength is pretty good and or your muscle enzymes are almost normal. However, patients continue to have significant pain and fatigue. Unfortunately, this situation is quite common and many doctors fail to recognize that muscle pain and fatigue are in fact symptoms of myositis. Next, I will discuss why does this happen that patient muscle weakness improve, but patient pain and fatigue lingers. First, I will address patient fatigue and then pain. Myositis leads to a cycle of inflammation followed by muscle death. By treating myositis with immune suppressive and some other drugs, we are typically stopping this inflammation and preventing further muscle death. But what happens is, by the time patient gets treated over weeks to months, they have already lost a lot of muscle mass. And it is very difficult to reverse this muscle mass with immune suppressive or other treatment. And that is why it takes long time for patients to recover their fatigue even after they have been treated for their muscle weakness. Muscle fatigue may take months to years to improve and in some cases patients are never able to come to their baseline. The only treatment for this muscle fatigue is exercise and slowly building the muscle endurance over time. Immune suppressive or other typical myositis drugs don't work for muscle fatigue. It's only you over time who can recover your muscle strength to as close as to baseline. And typically I keep patients, give patients a target of about 90 to 95% of their baseline. Now let me address muscle pain. Again, your muscle have been hit with significant inflammation leading to significant muscle damage which basically means alteration in normal muscle structure. Sometimes this alteration in normal muscle structure lead to increased sensitivity of the pain nerve fibers, which are typically supplying the muscles. When this happens, patient would have muscle pain on the day-to-day -day activity. Typically, this muscle pain is on the muscles that were previously affected by myositis. Typically, these will be larger muscles, for example, the shoulder arm muscles as well as the thigh and the leg muscles will be affected with muscle pain. It may take months to years for patients to recover from this muscle pain and sometimes patients are never completely recovered from this pain. Also, the treatment for this muscle pain is not immune suppressive drugs or other drugs typically used to counter inflammation of myositis these drugs will not work for muscle pain. In fact, the only proven treatment for muscle pain or improvement in muscle pain over time in myositis patient is exercise and building your muscles back up again by continuous exercise and endurance exercise activities. Last but not the least, remember that the steroid typically is not an answer for your muscle pain or fatigue. Steroid medications such as prednisone, or prednisolone um, can actually be more harmful to your muscles than doing any good. In short run, taking steroid may help patient feel better. That is because steroids are typically energy boosting drugs. But in long run, patients can have more harmful effects of steroid than any benefit from it. I also want patients and doctors to remember that another reason for pain in myositis is fibromyalgia. Now fibromyalgia is associated with almost all autoimmune rheumatological conditions. Typically, we say about 20 to 30% of all rheumatological conditions can be associated with fibromyalgia and same is true for myositis. So sometimes patient's myositis is treated but the fibromyalgia surface and causing significant pain and fatigue. It is rather very difficult to differentiate the pain or muscle pain from fibromyalgia as compared to muscle pain coming as a direct result of myositis. However, whatever worth is, tip, mo most commonly the muscle pain from myositis would be in more proximal areas like arms and thighs. 
whereas muscle pain from fibromyalgia would be diffused throughout the body. In the end, I want to confess that very little has been done in terms of research in pain and fatigue of myositis. Most of the research has gone into inflammation and muscle weakness. So we need to do more as a myositis community to address this issue of pain and fatigue in myositis. With that, I want to thank you and next week we will discuss skin rashes of dermatomyositis.